How's it going friends and welcome to the channel. So in this video we are going to be looking at Airfix's Bristol Blenheim Mark 1. Um, I've been looking forward to doing this kit for quite a while, I know it's been out for a while. Um, as you're aware I'm not a massive uh, Airfix fan um, but I'm sticking with them because you know I don't, they get a lot of hate speech and I'm probably guilty of that a little bit, you know, a bit of negativity towards them. But they are a British company and, you know, we need to support British companies. Obviously, if you, particularly if you're British, it'll help a lot. Um, if you're not, it'll also help quite a lot as well. I do really want Airfix to really, you know, get out there, get, you know, even bigger than they already are uh, into uh, the hobby. And hopefully I'd just like to, like, them to iron out all the sort of issues they've been having uh, over the years but to be fair some of the stuff that i have done recently and stuff that i have seen and stuff that is coming looks absolutely um, amazing and i do hope them all the best um in you know really you know smashing uh, through the market and you know make themselves even bigger and better in the future so there's not much else to say really apart from grab yourself a brew and a bicky and we'll just jump straight into this build. So of course we start with the cockpit and it has some really nice uh, details. It's very simple uh, to put up uh, together. And to be honest with you, there's only really a handful of parts. You know, you can, you can see you've got the seat, uh, some of the framework that goes uh, either side of it and the control column. I have added a little... Uh, wire uh, for the brake line that runs down the back is a little bit of detail that isn't actually <laughs> going to be seen fits to sort of uh, the main spar area which again builds up very uh, really simple and easily it's really why I didn't uh, you know film that part um, and as you can see just all, all, all attached together really nicely all that's really needs um, for it to do as you can see putting it to the uh, main uh, sort of fuselage half and putting the control column in. I also added a few uh, Y's in the back, which again, you're not going to see. Now, before I sort of started doing anything, and because this is going to be a bit I'd forget, this has uh, the option of having two external uh, bomb racks on, which I'm going to put in. So you need to make sure that the slots are cut out for this. Obviously, if you don't want to put these external bomb racks on, you just, you know, miss this part out. There's not really much else that needs to actually go into the fuselage apart from this uh, radio set that sits uh, behind or near to the uh, gunner's uh, turret, which is a part that actually doesn't even really need to go in. So probably what I'd do is save that part and use it for some random project uh, down the line. Now, talking about the uh, gunner's um, turret, Airfix have gave you this little jig um, to help you glue the uh, turret together and it's a, a great little uh, thing to do because it would be a fiddly part just trying to do it all by hand and as you can see I've pretty much just glued it all together I haven't really waited for anything because the jig makes it hell of a lot easy uh, for you to glue this together Once it's all dried and hopefully you haven't glued it to the uh, jig, you have the uh, lower half of the turret. Now one thing I would suggest uh, before um, putting any of the clear parts on, uh, like I've done here, is actually paint it uh, beforehand because there's a couple of little posts um that come up uh, the side into the main uh, sort of like ring of the uh, turret and if you don't paint them they're going to be gray and i actually made that mistake and i didn't realize until a bit later on so moving on to uh, painting uh, the insides standard cockpit green um and painting the instrument panel i did a really basic job uh, of this so you can see i used a dry brushed uh, like a whitey gray which gives a, a nice sort of uh, effect and raises the dials. Um, there was a, a decal for that, but I just decided this was going to be easy because you're not really going to see it. And then moving on to um, 
painting the parachute, which you can see was a bit of a rush, uh, sorry, rough job. Um, but you know, a little bit of clean up and a little bit of patience with it, doing those, uh, the stringy bits or the strappy bits or the, the stringy bits uh, to the parachute. So to give the seats a wee bit of uh, an extra worn look, I've obviously painted them in a sort of leathery brown colour and lightened that colour in a little bit too light in the case of this, but I can do it down in a second. Um, just using obviously a sponge and a brush to make it look a bit like worn and cracked and uh, quite well used um, leather seating. So when I come to put the wash on, uh, I've used Tamiya uh, accent colour, uh, dark brown which is one of my favorite and I think works for pretty much everything and that will tone that all down then I put the seat belts in and then give them the same wash again just to give them a little bit of a, an old um, and weathered look now this is the bit that I really wasn't looking forward to doing was the uh, main cockpit glass as you can see it's a bit of a funky shape um, and it did take a little bit of fettling uh, to get it into place and then obviously it's in two halves. Now, the one bit I wasn't looking to do in is that seam line down the middle. Uh, I did my best as I could to clearing it out. And I, I think I did all right in the end. As you can see, there's also a little bit of a gap at the bottom. The undercarriage assembly was a nice little unit. And again, went together really nicely. And slots uh, within the wing, um, again, nicely and very slug. Uh, slug? It's very snugly. Um... And again, it was nice, you know, good bit of uh, engineering um, for Airfix uh, for this part in particular. It says it fitted really, really nicely. Now, the only bit I had a bit of an issue was was uh, around uh, the um, join between the uh, the wing and the, the fuselage. As you can see, there was a little bit of a potential short shot in the in the moulding, and this little fairing on the back also because um, the way it was moulded onto the plastic. Uh, onto the sprue it was a little bit uh, bent but a little bit filler and straight there that was easily done i've also decided to have uh, the flaps down and again these go on uh, quite simply if you want to have them closed you just uh, cut the nibs off and, and have it closed so we move on to painting i've decided to do um some obviously pre-shading and what i want to try and do is sort of intensify the mottling um, I've gone for the uh, a dark ready brain um, beforehand and for the olive or the, the, the RF green, sorry, we use yellow. And in the hope that this will uh, bring out some uh, mottling, a little bit of variation uh, within the paint when the top layers go on. So I did the light brown first, which was actually uh, Tamiya's Flat Earth. Gave it a few light coats. I did go a little bit uh, heavy in some areas, so I did lose some of that uh, pre-shading and, and, and mottling look. Um, but turned out okay in the end. And masking it off, I used um, AK's uh, modeling putty. Uh, sorry, masking putty. Um, it goes down really good. Uh, gives you a nice, um, you know, hard uh, line. And again, going lightly, you can just about see some of that mottling uh, in there as well. Again, exactly the same for the bottom, but instead of using black, I use NATO black instead. It's not uh, too harsh a uh, black colour. And again, light coats are leaving that sort of mottled look underneath. The exhaust rings uh, are painted in a silver uh, gold colour. Um, as it kind of sort of best represents of what I've seen of uh, sort of newer exhaust stubs. And from reference photos, I've seen these kind of go a kind of a bit of a coppery uh, colour. Um, so I went uh, over it in very uh, thin light coats um, of copper and then slowly adding uh, some burnt iron into that to, to dark it down. May have gone a little bit uh, a little bit too coppery um, but at the end of the day I was quite happy and it's kind of what you tend to sort of see um, with model uh, versions of these um, exhaust rings. Um, so yeah. I, I was quite happy with it either way. I think in in the end it gives quite a nice, you know, effect and that sort of you know well used uh, look around the exhaust. So the markings uh, within the kit sort of show this um, darker ring. So we used a sort of uh, smoke colour to, to darken uh, the area. I think what it is is that at some point the uh, the markings were slightly changed or they're made smaller. 
and I think on the uh, main fuselage there was a yellow band that would have been originally around uh, the, the side roundel and I think they've uh, removed it. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, so when it comes down to um, put the decals on, it's the usual micro set and micro sole. And as always, I've never faulted um, Airfix's decals. They went down really, really nicely. And particularly once I've uh, got as much as the uh, liquid uh, from underneath the decal, uh, it sat really nice and flat and into all those details really nicely. So as we come on to washes, I've used uh, Ammo's uh, Stone Grey for black aircraft or black paint jobs. And it's an ammo uh, product as I always use for, for my washes. And again, you just put it into all the areas that you want basically highlighted. Uh, and then clean them up with uh, some odors thinners or some white spirits. And obviously, as you can see, it makes all those pan panels pop out so they've been a flat black surface. As we come on to the top, I've made my own uh, wash using some cheap artist oils uh, for this. And I kind of made a sort of like a, a tan blacky brown sort of weird colour. I just added a load of weird paints together just to sort of, uh, you know, give a kind of slightly browny uh, wash. And once they were slightly dry, as you see, I used a uh, dry uh, paper towel and uh, wiped all the excess away. So we come on to the uh, exhaust smoke, as you can see I've, I've used uh, white uh, for over the back as if you look on uh, most reference photos of exhaust stains on uh, dark or particularly black uh, painted aircraft, they're, they're sort of like a bleached uh, white and then went in with a sort of blacky brown um, to you know give the sort of that exhaust staining. Now for the dope cover on the uh, machine gun port, and it does actually come with a decal. I don't really like using them because I always sort of struggle with them. I don't think they look quite right and they're very sort of you know flat. So I use uh, some Tamiya masking tape, which gives you that sort of dope fabric uh, texture and sort of forced it in so it sort of uh, shows the gun barrel because once they were doped over, they uh, obviously tightened up and obviously it shows where the gun barrel is. Also, for sort of a bit of make sure it was completely adhered, I used some uh, super glue so it wouldn't uh, hopefully will come off, and obviously painted it in the uh, sort of dope uh, dope red colour. Again, using Tamiya masking tape, I made a kind of like remove before flight cover uh, for the pitot tubes. Uh, again, just masking tape with some super glue to make sure it sticks and uh, that classic remove before flight red colour. Now unfortunately before I moved on to doing some in these remove before flights for the uh, vents underneath the uh, engine, unfortunately I, I managed to smash out the undercarriage so I had to do a proper repair on it because I wanted to kind of keep the wheel slightly uh, flexible. So I cut out the original sort of uh, lugs that kind of you know, slotted the uh, wheels into place because you don't really need to glue them, they will just sort of slot in. So I've cut those out and with a micro drill bit, drilled some, some holes and again through uh, the wheel itself. And then what I'll do is I'm going to put a small uh, bit of brass rod um, through uh, the undercarriage uh, leg and straight across through uh, the tire to the other side. And then just to fix that in place on the uh, outer side of the undercarriage, I used some black um, flexi glue from um, VMS. And once that had dried, I sanded it down and repainted it. Once I'd sorted that out, because I actually had to do it on both uh, undercarriage, um, I've made these sort of plugs for these uh, venting uh, underneath uh, the uh, engine using some uh, green stuff and then super glued some more Tamiya tape and again I've tried to make it look like it's kind of blown in the breeze a little bit uh, once I got into position that's again super glued it and then painting that red. So 
So there we go, my friends. It's near time to show you the finished model. I just like to say thank you very much if you managed to get this far into the video. I do hope you have uh, enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you've thought uh, of the build so far and what you think of the finished model. If you're new around here and you have enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It'd help amazingly, or immensely is the word I was trying to find then. Um, you can also support the channel further. There are links in the description down below, but just liking and subscribing to the channel uh, helps uh, a great deal uh, as well. And also, if you put the bell notification on, you'll know when the next video is available. So, it's time to show you the finished uh, model. Again, I hope you have enjoyed the video and this build. And I'll catch you again soon.